So we're in the book of James. Let's get started. Now think about James. One of the things that history says and is documented that James didn't really believe as much of who his brother was, Jesus' brother. But after the ascension, he went to a whole nother level. And this is the year of what? Ascent, right? This is the year of what? This is the year of ascent. So after he saw his brother go up, I mean, can you imagine standing there and all of a sudden you, your brother just go up? If you were not convinced prior to that, <laughs> right? Then now, and he was a changed man, they said. So in this book of James, last week we went over tests and trials. Anybody remember that? A trials and tests. Anybody remember? Can we get a, a recap on what's one of the things you got out of tests and trials last week? Can anybody, anybody remember last Tuesday's lesson? Last week, tests and trials. Can somebody give me feedback as to what you recall from tests and trials? And s- Yes, some of our tests and trials are to grow us up. Anybody else? Yes. Praising God during those tests and trials. Anybody remember the cheerleaders? Y'all remember that, cheerleading? And if you were not here, when we talked about cheerleaders, we talked about in a lot of sports, particularly the game of football, Cheerleaders are there, and they are involved in the game, and they have to stay cheerful even when the team is losing. And the great thing that we know that as believers, even though it looks like we may be losing, we've already won. I could get a better amen on that one, all right? Even though it looks like we're, we're losing, even though it looks like, and here's, here's another thing, be careful making judgments about things you don't know when you see other people going through stuff. I'm going to say that one more time. You'd be surprised how many believers we have that think they are little Jesuses. You see a person going through a trial, and the first thing you start assessing is what they did wrong. That's the mistake Job's three friends made. They were attempting to judge a situation based on uh, sight. They had no clue what we get to see and you and I need to understand, if he did it with Job, possibly the Lord will do it with you. He'll brag on you to the devil. Well, how you know? Well, what did, what did Jesus say? Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. Now, you know what Jesus didn't say, Javon? He didn't say that I prayed that Satan don't mess with you. Come on. So stop all your whining. Look at somebody and say, no more whining. Yeah, some of y'all, y'all feel it right now. Who feeling that right now? Stop your whining. I don't know, Pat. All right, I'm putting myself out here. Sometimes I want to do a little whining. Because sometimes these trials come, man, and they, they can come rolling. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Right? And it's amazing to hear, to see what people are going through, and then to see the outcome of it afterwards. I have to go to D.C. Monday um, for a national, uh, to be on a panel f- for the National Minority Association, and, and it's in reference to mental health in our youth. And one of the things that uh, when I share with them um, is, it's one point I will make is, is not as bad as I th- as, it's not as bad as you think it is. It really is not. Anybody you all hyped up and you thought it was over? Only to now you live your life and you look back. Anybody? Right? You thought this way. I wasn't going to make it. Or how, how will I get through this? You even felt like you weren't going to get through it. But now looking back, what it looks like. You made it through. How about the things you look back at now you worried about? It never happened. How about that one? Come on, put that in the chat. It never happened. You have to be careful with that. Some things we trump up in our imaginations, and we make it so real, but it never happens. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So in the book of James, test and trials, another thing about test and trials, we, we talked about some trials are self-induced. Anybody remember that? 
Come on, shout it out. Some trials are what? Self-induced. Self and God told Peter through, uh, through the book of Peter, he says, now, if you're going through a trial because of something you did wrong, you don't get credit in heaven for that one. Everybody got it? But you know what you do get? If he chastens you, and he will, if God chastens us, you know what he's, he's actually out of that, even though we don't get credit in heaven as it relates to overcoming a trial that came as a result of the enemy trying to keep us from trusting God. Because remember, the test, come on, let's go. Let's, let's do this real quick. What is Satan's ultimate goal? What is the test? What is the ultimate test? You said to kill us? Okay. So that would be the result. But what's the test? Come on. Say it again. The testing of your what? Your faith. Okay, three Hebrew boys. You going to keep praying in this God? We're going to see. We're going to throw you behind in a fire. And we're going to see. We're going to see if you're going to trust him. And if God is no respect to person, that means you and I are going to be tossed in some fires. And what is it going after? Your faith. Sometimes you may be tossed in a, in a trial of finances, fiery trial of finances. And guess what God is attempting to grow you in? Now, Satan is trying to get you to stop doubt, start doubting. But what is God trying to get you to do? Your daddy got you. And the first thing you got to start saying when you're going through, you got to start saying, my father got it. Everything I need, I'll have it when I need it. Amen. Let's work on that right now. My father got it. Father got it. And I'll have it when I need it. I when I need it. What we want is, we want to have it. <laughs> but you don't develop how many have ever been to the weight room and got muscles without putting weight on the bar. Right? It don't happen. So your heavenly father has created a weightlifting system in faith to get you and I stronger. So of course you should be growing. So when I started lifting weights, I just did regular push-ups. Then I used the bar. The bar weighs 35 pounds. Then after using the bar, I put 45s on each end. So now I'm going up. Something would be wrong if I've been lifting weights for 10 years and I'm still only can lift the bar. And do you know a lot of people live like that, believers? They still today are lifting the same amount of weight. And did you guys know in sports, strength is very important. And how, how many of y'all know in faith? Strong faith is very what? Important. So we're in the book of James, but today, today I have to stop on one word because I think we go by it too fast. And I started to go to a hardware store and buy a bunch of buckets and give everybody a bucket, <laughs> just as a visual. And then I started, Keith, to put on that bucket, right on that bucket, the word joy. If you're going to live in today's time, you're going to have to carry you a bucket of joy. Because I mean, man, man, man. Come on. Am I in the right place, man? I think in the book of James, we go by this scripture too fast. James, a servant, this verse 1, James chapter, ver, chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm writing to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. So he's sending this letter out to probably the different members of the 12 tribes who were born again, who were exiting Jerusalem, like Ukraine is going on, a war is going on, right? A lot of those people are getting out of there. That's what was happening in Jerusalem. A lot of these born-again Messianic Jews, Messianic Jewish person is somebody that has received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So Messianic Jews were born again, but heavy persecution from the religious sect. Apostle Paul was one of them when he was Saul. They were persecuting him, not just talking about him. A lot of times <laughs> we get upset because people talk about us. When these people, Paul is trying to, Stephen got stoned, they were being brought to prison, right? So now they are scattering. So he's writing this letter to encourage them because if you're going through this stuff, I thought when I gave my life to the Lord, it was supposed to get better. 
So we have to be careful how we witness to people. Give your life to the Lord, everything going to be all right. How many of y'all know? Eddie, you've been a soldier on the line on the streets. We got to make sure we tell people, this not, this won't turn everything around right, right away. Am I? Am? So you got to tell people about what you go through. We have this, uh, how would I describe this? This, this, I don't know, this disposition like nothing is wrong. There, there's some things that are not right that I'm dealing with right now. Yes. Amen. It don't matter. I lose some, in football, I lost, I lost some plays. I didn't do well. But we didn't quit. Amen. We stayed on the field, kept fighting. And some, some, sometime we may have had a whole series of plays that didn't go well. And we had to go back out there. I remember when they would score a touchdown on me, they'd score a touchdown on me. And do you know what? I had to go back on the field. I couldn't quit and go home. <laughs> so here we go. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greetings. Here's our context. We're not getting any further than, than the scripture. It says, my brothers, these are people that are deserting. They're running for their lives because of persecution. Some were being stoned and some were being put in prison. This is serious. Somebody say serious. Serious. My brethren, count it all what? Joy. joy when you fall into divers, various what? Trials or temptations, King James says, right? So I want to stop here on the word joy. And if you could put that definition up, it says count it all what? I think still might get y'all a bucket. <laughs> Joy, the Greek word chara, chara, describes a feeling of inward what? Come on, y'all don't see it up there? Inward what? Come on, this is a participatory. Come on, let's go. Come on. Chara, that's the Greek word. Everybody say char. Ah. Char ah. Describes a feeling of inner what? Notice that's not outward. Where is that? Inward. Inward what? Gladness. Inward what? Delight. And rejoicing. This is something you and I have to do. This is something you and I have to do. Because there's a lot happening around us and in our world that don't put a smile on your face. Am I right? Right? <laughs> Is it, am I in the right place with this one? My brother encountered all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. He's saying when these things happen that are negative, he's saying do what? Count it all what? Count it all what? Do what? Count it all joy. In the New Testament, that's what the NT stand for. In the New Testament, when you see this word, is always used to signify a feeling of happiness. Come on. A feeling of happiness that is based on, come on, spiritual what? Realities. So, for example, come on, you're, you're amazing, smart group. If Job had the opportunity to read the book of Job prior to, go, prior to going through what he went through, do you think when he went through it, he would have had joy because he would have seen it from the spiritual perspective. Everybody got it? What's a spiritual perspective? Don't make it uh, spooky. What is God doing behind the scenes? What is he up to? In your marriage, are you really just going through the trial or are you asking God, what are you attempting to teach me through this? And if, if you and I don't have that perspective, guess what we're going to be? We're going to be fighting with people. For example, if you got somebody on your job who you may not be getting along with, why don't you ask, Lord, what are you teaching me 
Or what are you trying to show me through this difficult situation? It's a trial. You didn't start it a lot of times, right? Now, you may have, but a lot of times. <laughs> but let's just say you didn't. For whatever reason, your boss, you, you get a boss from hell. But really, your boss could be from heaven if you see it from the spiritual realities. Yes, yes. Come on now. Yes, amen. Yes. If we just stop here, what if I've been getting all of these patient opportunities to gain more patience? Anybody else? Yes. All these opportunities to gain more patience. It just seems like a person just today, they, they, they have, a, they have a, the right way to turn. <laughs> and they just won't turn. <laughs> but you know what I understand? Lord, you're teaching me patience. Because we're in this microwave society. That's how people do it with relationships. Relationships don't just happen overnight. Mar great marriages don't happen overnight. They say most, most businesses, uh, small businesses, do not make it past five years. A lot of times because they don't have the proper perspective. So look what it says. Always in the New Testament, joy signifies a feeling of happiness that is based on spiritual realities. And what is that last statement? Come on. Can't hear you. You mean I can have joy even sometimes when I'm having challenges? I can have joy. I'm, I'm preaching this to me. Now, y'all can get something out of it if you want. <laughs> It's easy to have joy when everything's going good. That the, that's, the world has buckets of that. Once you get here is learning to have joy. So let me give a few statements here. Here's another th uh, thing I want you to think about joy. It's a depth of assurance and confidence that ignites a cheerful heart. You and I have to be assured and remind ourselves and be confident that God is with us. Having a cheerful heart leads to cheerful behavior. That's a good statement. Having a cheerful heart leads to cheerful behavior. Let me stop for a moment. Why is it so hard sometimes to have a cheerful heart and have inward gladness? Come on, let's have some feedback. Wrong focus, wrong focus, okay. Not walking by faith? Looking at everything you see. Looking at everything you see? Anybody else? I need this lesson. I really do. I'm serious. I really need it. Anybody else need a, this lesson, right? Yes, yes. But here's what you have to understand. This will only work if you do it. This will only come to pass and benefit you if you and I start practicing it. Here's, here's a, uh, how about this? Can I give you a practical tip on something to do as often as you can? I want you, as often as you can, put it right there. I want you to do as often as you can, find something positive to say about everything. There was a guy going to the electric chair. And the, and the inmate, when he was on his way, the inmate was still in jail, that... While the guy was on his way to the electric chair, he said to him, more power to you. <laughs> These cats here, boy. <laughs> Finding something positive to say. And, oh, <laughs> it's a tough group here, man, on, online. Put a happy face. Put a smiley face. Put a smiley mojo. This, this is a tough group here. <laughs> Isn't it so easy to see the negative? We, never, we live in a negative world. So we have to practice this. If I can just tell you how beautiful y'all look just being here. How honorable it is to be able to serve in the capacity that we do. Positive. Begin. That don't mean you don't, you don't point out and correct things. But being intentional. I think it was one guy, it was two guys in, in the military. They were in jail. And one was in jail. He was going to get out uh, years later. And then another one. So they were talking. He said, what you in for? He said, oh, I went AWOL. And he told him how long he was in for. And it was, a, it was a bunch of days. 
And then, uh, then a guy asked the other guy, he said, what you, he, he says, uh, what you in for? He said, well, um, how, um, how, did I, how did he say this? He says, what are you in for? He says, I'm, no, he didn't answer. He says, actually, he was so mad, he's gonna, I'm, I'll be executed in, in, uh, in three days. I messed that joke up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just forget that joke. <laughs> edit it, edit, <laughs> edit the whole thing. Y'all know what I love? Authenticity. I just jacked that joke up. I'll give it to you on another day. All right. <laughs> but here's the, the gist of it. So you'll see what he's talking about. These two were talking, and the guy who um, the guy who had more days was talking to the guy who had three. And the guy who had three days before he got out, he told me, I said, I got three days. He said, what'd you do? I did this. And he said, I got three days. He said, why are you so happy? What did he say? Because it's, it's important. I, I want you guys to get this. But the bottom line is guys being executed in three days. And he was in jail. And he, oh, that's what it was. This guy got, the other guy got a bunch of days. And the guy who, um, he, he did something to the general, treason or something. And he said, all you got was three days? He said, no, I'll be, I'm executed in three days. That was the point. But I missed it. <laughs> Let's get back to joy. <laughs> joy is not experience. Uh, joy is not an experience that comes from favorable circumstances, but is God's gift to believers. Joy is a gift. And if you go to uh, Ephesians 5, it is a gift. What if I told you, everybody say 72. Anybody remember the rule of 72? Some of your accountants, the rule of 72. What if I told you it takes 72 of 72 muscles to frown? I remember when I was in college, people would always come to me, Sister Minnie, and they'd say, why are you so mad? And then I would tell them, why do you keep saying I'm so mad? Uh, why are you always frowning? And then I would frown more, telling them, I ain't frowning. And then finally, when enough people told me that, then I said, I got to work on my disposition and get in the mirror and tell my face it's okay to smile. Right? So how many, y'all, how many muscles do you think it takes to smile? It takes 72 to frown. What if I told you under 20? 14. 14 muscles. Sometimes you just need to smile. Because this world and the things you go through can cause you to take that smile. And maybe that's what Satan is trying to do. He's trying to take the smiles off believers' faces. So what if when he tries to mess with you, you intentionally smile? Let's have a smiling exercise right now. (laughs) When the last time you did this? And some of y'all still not frowning. You especially need this smile when you're raising kids. <laughs> what y'all think about that? Here we go. Let's close this out. I want to show you the antidote through scripture of the things that God has placed in his word that will cause joy in our lives. If you put up Luke, hold up. What if I told you there's something you and I can do to bring joy to heaven? To heaven. Y'all, we always want God giving us stuff. What if there's something we can give to heaven? Wouldn't that be pretty cool? Can you imagine, you mean to tell me there's something I can do to cause joy in heaven? That's a pretty good deal. Now, you got to know if there's something I could do to cause joy in heaven, then whatever I can do to cause joy in heaven going to ricochet back to me. 
So put up Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Please. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Joy. Here we go. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be where? Come on, come on, Clyde. What are we doing? Joy shall be where? Over one sinner that repents more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Verse 10, same chapter, please. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. And if you and I causing joy with the angels, don't you think a few of those angels come around and help you? Because you didn't cause them joy. And evidently, angels must be concerned with people being born again. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13. How about the future hope and what's coming? But rejoice, somebody say rejoice. rejoice. In so much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you shall be glad also with exceeding what? Joy. Counted joy. Rejoice when you're going through these trials. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. Counted what? Joy. joy. He said, but rejoice in so much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceedingly, exceeding what? Joy. Joy. What else? How about the, uh, John chapter 15, verse 11? The word of God brings joy. John chapter 15, verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that... Whose joy? This Jesus talking. My joy might remain in and that. Oh, come on. That your what? Your joy might be what? Not half full. Full. These things have I spoken. In other words, Jesus saying these things, I'm talking to you, my word I'm giving you, that my joy remain in you. So now he's saying that his joy, and then he talks about my joy. So we got a double dipping. We got Jesus' joy, Javon, and we got our joy. Yes, yes, yes. Come on now. Yes. So the word of God brings joy. How about this one? Prayer. Go to John chapter 16, verse 24. Prayer brings joy. These are things that you can do to cause joy. And if you and I are not receiving joy, you probably can go down this list and realize why you haven't been getting joy and experiencing joy. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that. Whose joy? I can't hear you. Like if you were going to the doctor right now, if you were going to the spiritual doctor, I give you a prescription. And that's what I'm giving you right now. And if you just follow this prescription, <laughs> all of a sudden, they, somebody's going to start saying to you, what happened to you? Because this automatic, like this is automatic. This is like a byproduct. If you and I will pray, if we're asking his name and believe that we receive, you shall receive that you're what? Here's interesting. Us going to him brings us joy. Us praying to him, he says, your joy just won't be joy, but it's going to be full. Come, anybody hear this? The joy is going to be if the if the maybe your joy half full, if your your glass half full. He's saying if you start praying and asking me about all this stuff you're worrying about, I'm getting ready to fill that thing up. And anything that's full comes out. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. You in the doc. I wish I had on a doctor's uh, coat. <laughs> and had a tele. What, what is it? Uh, stethoscope on me. Because you got to take this prescription. Look what it says. 
Another thing, repentance brings joy. 1 John 1 9. 1 John 1 9. Keeping a clean record before God brings joy. But if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to do what? Forgive us of our sins and to do what? Cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. So keep a clean slate. Be quick to confess your sins. Be what? Quick. Quick. Why? You don't want anything to disturb your joy. Right? Sometimes you got to say to yourself, not to the person, I'm not going to let you take my joy. Not to yourself, because you say it to yourself, not the person, because it could be your husband or your wife. <laughs> I'm not going to let you take my joy today now. Everybody. <laughs> All right. The presence and fellowship of believers bring, believers bring joy. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. Fellowship. So if I was the devil, Brother Peter, I don't want people to fellowship. That which we have seen and heard. That which we have seen and heard. That means they physically experienced this. Declare we unto you. We declare unto you what we've seen and what we've heard. These are some witnesses. Everybody see this? We unto you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ, verse 4. And these things write we unto you that, I can't hear you, your that you're what? Your There's that word full again. So what do you think's happening, Brother Eddie? If we're not doing these things, we're probably not full. We're probably going through in the flesh trying to go deal with all this stuff. Because what you need to understand, stuff going to always be happening. <laughs> always. Wars, he told us what's coming. Go read Matthew 24. Wars and rumors of wars. It says in the last days, which we're in, Last days, we're probably in the beginning of the last days. Some say the end. I don't know. But it looked like we're getting close. And we're to live as if he's coming any day. But it looks like these things, he says in Matthew 24, he says it's going to be rumors of wars. He said the love of many are going to wax cold. So how many of y'all know we're going to need a bucket of joy? <laughs> I sure, I should have brought that bucket. <laughs> all right here we go here's another one that so giving brings joy 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 20 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 there we go avoiding this I, I should say 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 2 I'm sorry verse 2 how that in great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. In the context, what's happening here? This is a group of believers who are going through enormous trials. But in spite of what they're going through, they still gave Paul a generous gift. Did y'all see that? Yes. In spite of what all they were going through, they were going through hell, look like. But they said how that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their what? Liberality. They were generous even in the midst of affliction. They were generous even in the midst of affliction. So you know what this might want to tell you? Find ways to give while you're going through. Come on now, I got, they pay doctors 500 grand a year and y'all, <laughs> they give you a prescription. Come on. <laughs> All right, let's do the last one. Fellowship, fellowship with the father and son brings joy. We need 
to keep short accounts by confessing our sins so that this fellowship is not adversely affecting us. If you go to 1 John chapter 3, I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. 1 John chapter 1, 3 and 4. And we out. Is this good? Yes. Joy. That which we have seen and heard, we declare unto you that also we have fellowship. I read this one already. Go, go to verse 4. And these things write unto you that your joy may be full. I, I go back to this one again because fellowship is so important. I wanted to close out and finish with this. Fellowship among believers is so important. Fellowship among believers is so important. So that's, that was the focus today. Joy, inner gladness, delight, rejoicing. And what are some things that he said we could do? Prayer. Anybody remember that? Prayer. We also keep a clean record before God, confessing our sins. Anybody remember that? Also, winning souls, not only bring joy to heaven, but bring joy to who? Us. And if you've gone out and you serve, how does it feel when you win a soul? Man, man, man. And you don't hear it too much. I'll, I'll do a whole evangelism series. And, and sheep bear sheep. Shepherds don't. And a lot of time it's just telling your story and, and telling parts of your story the, all the great parts, but also the other things that God is doing in you. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Converse bring joy, hearing that those you have mentored, go to our third John 4, mentorship. Hearing that those you have mentored are discipled, those that you mentored or discipled are walking in the truth brings joy. Y'all got it? 3 John verse 4. 3 John verse 4. Last scripture and we out. 3 John verse 4. There we go. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. This is a scripture I've been praying over my children and over every member of this church and over every partner that view our services. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. This is the heartbeat of a parent. This is the heartbeat of a parent. Pray for your children to walk in truth. Everybody got it? To walk in what? And this is a selfish prayer for parents. Because what do we get when they're walking in truth? Come on, it's right on there. What's that big old word right before joy? What's that one? What's the word right before joy? Greater. 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 How about that? I have no greater joy. This tops them all. That's what he's saying. A lot of things bring joy. And maybe he's saying this from a, a, a parent's perspective. And if you think about it, what greater joy do we have other than seeing our children walk in truth? It can also be one of the greatest pains. Am I in the right place? Did we need a dose of joy today? So, I already got the, uh, the nurses coming with the needles. <laughs> and you can line up right, right here. And we're going to give you the shot vaccinated with joy.